Hi, I'm Shorab Sharkar. Um, I will be speaking on Brownian absolute continuity of the KPZ fixed point. And this is a joint work with Balin Virag. And I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to speak here. So first I would speak on some background material on the KPZ fixed point, followed by some definitions and the main theorem of this talk. Then I would give a partial review of the literature and then some applications of the main theorem and Lastly, I would end by giving a brief outline of the proof. So the Aryan ensemble is, was introduced by Prahofer and Spawn in 2002. It is a stationary, it is a sequence of uh, lines that are, sta that are stationary in time. And what we will work with here uh, are the parabolically shifted Aryan ensemble. That is, we take this stationary Aryan ensemble and subtract a parabola minus T square from each of the lines. So we get this ordered parabolically shifted Aryan ensemble. The top line of this Aryan ensemble is what is called the Airy 2 process that appear as a limiting spatial fluctuation of random group models starting from a single point. The Airy sheet and the directed landscape were constructed by Dovon, Oatman, and Virag in 2018 as a scaling limits of one of the KPZ class models called the Brownian last passage population. The standard Airy sheet is a random continuous function. We will denote it by S and it is defined in terms of the Airlen ensemble. Now the KPZ fixed point is a, is a universal object in this class. So all models in the KPZ universality class have an analog of height function, which is conjectured to converge at large time and small length scales under the KPZ 1 to 2 is to 3 scaling to a universal object called the KPZ fixed point. This was constructed as a Markov process and T by Mitetsky, Kester and Rimenik. Uh, in 2016. The KPZ fixed point at time one can be written in terms of the airy sheet that we defined in the previous slide and the initial condition H0 as simply this maximization problem that H1 is the maximum of the initial condition H0x plus the airy sheet SXY maximized over all x. Now, two very special examples of the KPZ fixed point are the Airy 2 process and the Airy 1 process. So when the initial condition H0 is the narrow edge initial condition, that is it takes the value zero at zero and minus infinity everywhere else, then the KPZ fixed point at time one, H1, is the Airy 2 process, the parabolically shifted Airy 2 process. And when the initial condition H0 is the flat initial condition, that is H0 is zero everywhere, then H1 is called the Airy 1 process. Now, before going to the main theorem, we need to define two things. So first, the Brownian uncompact. So a function f is called Brownian uncompact if for all y1 and y2, the law of f minus fy1 on the compact interval y1 to y2 is absolutely continuous with respect to that of a Brownian motion with deficient parameter two, starting from y1 comma zero on the interval y1 to y2. So simply what it means is that um, F is Brownian compact. If on any compact interval, it is absolutely continuous with respect to a Brownian motion starting from the same endpoint. And the next thing is a class of initial conditions, which we define as finitary initial condition. So a function F that can also take value minus infinity is said to belong to this class IT, the T finitary initial condition. If F is not identically minus infinity, F is bounded above on any compact interval, and F minus X squared over T over the absolute value of X that goes to minus infinity as X goes to plus minus infinity. So one can show that HT, the KPC fixed point at time T is finite for all X if and only if the initial condition F is in the class IT. That is why we call it finitary initial condition. For example, a function f that satisfies this kind of a thing, f is at most c plus x squared over t minus x log x for some c positive, that is in this class it. So now we are ready to give the main theorem of this talk. So for all initial conditions h0 in the class it, ht, the kpc fixed point at time t, is Brownian on compacts. So for all initial condition h0, 
that will make the KBC fixed point at time t finite. So this is a necessary and sufficient condition. This is the largest class of initial conditions that one can start with. The KPC fixed point at time t on any compact interval is absolutely continuous with respect to Brownian motion. Uh, so next I will just give a very partial, over, partial review of literature. So this Brownian on compact for the ARE2 process, that is when we start the KPC fixed point from the narrow edge initial condition. This was proved by Corwin and Hammond in 2014 in their seminal paper. So ARE2 process is Brownian on compact, this was known. Um, Hammond along with um, Calvert and Hegre gave bounds on the radon nuclear derivative of this ARE2 process with respect to that of the Brownian motion. So they showed that the radon nuclear derivative is in LP space for all P positive. But this was all for the ARE2 process. The best result for general initial condition um, was again by Hammond with Calvert and Hegre um, and uh, initially by Hammond. So what he called the Brownian patchwork quilt. So what he showed is that starting from any initial condition, the KPC fixed point at time t on any compact interval can be divided into a number of random number of sub intervals such that the restriction of the process, the restriction of the KPC fixed point on any sub interval is absolutely continuous with respect to Brownian motion. But the question remained open is whether just one single patch would suffice. That is whether the KPC fixed point at time t is absolutely continuous with respect to Brownian on the entire compact interval was a question that was uh, asked in Hammond's paper. And this is what we prove here. Uh, Mitchell, Kester, and Romanik in 2016 gave some Brownian nature of the KPC fixed point. They proved that the local limit of the the local limit convergence of the KPC fixed point to the Brownian motion and also the holder half minus continuity. And Pimentel also in a series of papers gave local Brownian limit and holder continuity for certain initial conditions. But uh, nothing like this absolute continuity of the KPC fixed point on any compact interval with respect to Brownian motion was known uh, before this work. So why is this result important? Uh, so this is a very simple application, though I mean this particular thing can be proved in other ways as well, that KPC fixed point has a unique maxima on complex. So this is an analog of the question of Johansson, which he asked for ARE2 process. So in particular, the ARE1 process has a unique maxima on compact. This would just follow directly. A more interesting um, application is this three half variation of JSX that we that is an ongoing work with Dovin and Virag. So let us recall what a variation is. So for any function f on the domain S2, S plus T and any alpha positive, we define the alpha variation of f on scale epsilon as this quantity. So we divide the domain into intervals of length epsilon and take the deviation of f, raise it to the power alpha and sum it up. Then what we can show using our uh, Brownian on compact result is if pi denotes a geodesic from 0, 0 to 0, 1 in the directed landscape, then the three half variation, that is with alpha equal to three half, the three half variation of pi converges in probability to some quantity nu as epsilon goes to zero. So, I mean, one can relate this to the quadratic variation result for the Brownian motion. So just like the Brownian motion is, has a quadratic variation, the directed geodesics have a three half variation. And we can give what nu is, nu is given in this form, this is the explicit uh, description of new, the three half moment of x minus y, where x and y are given in this form. It is the argmax of b minus r plus s minus b minus r, where b is a Brownian motion, r is a Bessel 3 process, and s is an airy sheet, and all three objects are independent. Okay, so in the remaining time, I'll just briefly go over the proof idea. So the main ingredient of the proof is the Brownian Gibbs property of the area line ensemble that was proved by Corbin and Hammond in 2014, which just says that the area line ensemble on any compact interval, the conditional distribution of it given everything outside is just the law of L independent Brownian bridges between those end points conditioned not to intersect. And um, 
The other thing is the description of the area sheet in terms of last passage percolation across area line ensemble. So this is from the paper of uh, Duncan and Balin and Oatman, so DOV paper in 2018, that the area sheet can be coupled with the area line ensemble um, in such a way that the area sheet can be written as a difference of last passage percolation across the area line ensembles. Now, what is the last passage percolation to um, quickly go over? Uh, for a sequence of continuous functions f, we define a path from xl to ym as a non-increasing function pi that maps the interval x to y to the set of natural numbers such that pi x is l and pi y is m. So roughly what it means is that uh, if we think of these functions f1, f2, dot, 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 in this sequence ordered, then this path is just um, uh, an increasing step function. And the length of the path is defined as a sum of the increments of f along that path. So this is a formal definition. So the last passage value of f between endpoints xl and ym would be the maximum length of over all paths pi. So the maximum length over all paths pi between the endpoints xl to ym. That is the last passage value of f. And the uh, path for which such a last passage value is attained is called a zero set. Now, how do we prove this? How do we prove our Brownian absolute continuity result for the KPZ fixed point? So for simplicity, just take t equal to one and the compact interval y into y2 is just one to two. Then it is not difficult to see that h1, the KPZ fixed point at time one can be written in this form in the, um, for some random quantity g. And this is the last passage percolation across the area line ensemble. This is, um, expected because the area sheet can be written in terms of the last passage percolation across the area and ensemble. Now, these random quantities G are such that if one conditions on the value of the area and ensemble at all X negative, uh, then these GLs are measurable with respect to that sigma algebra. So if you just condition on that and we use the induction on this random quantity N, then by Brownian Gibbs property, if we condition on everything outside, we know that this last passage across the area line ensemble can just be replaced by last passage percolation across Brownian motions, which is called the Brownian last passage percolation. So this is the main ingredient that we get from the Brownian Gibbs property. Then if one just replaces this uh, last passage across area line ensemble by this Brownian last passage percolation and say n is just equal to one, then it, this is just, and we condition on these random quantities g, this is this just becomes a shifted Brownian motion for n equal to one, which is of course absolutely continuous with respect to Brownian motion. For n equal to two, it is just the reflection of a Brownian motion starting from g1 of another independent Brownian motion starting from g2, which is called the Pitman transform. And again, such things are absolutely continuous with respect to Brownian motion on compact intervals, uh, away from the origin. So. Um, we can just reproduce this argument and use induction on n to prove the general case. So that's it. So for uh, future directions is, can we give uniform bounds of the radon nicotine derivative? That is, can we show that the radon nicotine derivative is in LP space for all P positive? Uh, if we can show that, that will fully settle the conjecture of Hammond. And uh, this is an ongoing work with Balin. For details, please see our paper at, uh, so it is on archive. And thank you for your attention.